Welcome to the Power Integrations course, Fixing a Flyback Supply with No Output Voltage. Before beginning, please confirm that the problem you're experiencing with your power supply is no voltage on the output. For this course, you'll need the following equipment, a programmable AC source, and a digital multimeter. Whenever coming into contact with the power supply, it's important to remember that these boards can store hazardous voltages. Before handling the board, Make sure the input capacitor is discharged. First, disconnect the AC input and measure the voltage across the input capacitor pins. If the voltage is greater than 10 volts, then hold the discharge board across the input capacitor pins until the LED turns off. Now the board is safe to handle. The possible causes for no output voltage are an incorrect layout causing an output short circuit, one or more components are missing, cold solder joints, the input is not connected, there is a blown input fuse, one or more components are reversed on the board, the PCB layout causes an input short circuit, or the power integrations device has been damaged. Before beginning, check that an incorrect layout has not caused an output short circuit in your design, for example, shorting across an output capacitor. If it has, you'll need to relay out your design. Next, ensure that all components in your design have been populated on your board, if any components are missing and are not designated on your schematic as optional, install them and retest. Also check for cold solder joints by touching up each joint with a little extra solder. Cold solder joints often look like normal connections but provide intermittent connectivity at best. We'll begin by applying the AC input voltage. The variac should be turned off with the dial set to zero. Connect the variac output to the power supply inputs. Then connect the DMM, measuring AC voltage, across the input terminals of the board. Now, turn on the variac and slowly increase the AC voltage, to about 20 volts. Check that the voltage is increasing on the meter. If the meter is not reading any voltage, check your variac, leads, and the power outlet at the wall. If you are seeing an AC voltage across the input pins, then turn off the AC, Disconnect your DMM and connect the leads across the low voltage DC output. Change the meter to read DC voltage. Turn on the variac and slowly turn up the input AC voltage until you reach the typical input voltage for your power supply. Now retest the output voltage. If you're still not seeing an output voltage, turn off your variac, remove the AC leads from the board, and discharge the input capacitor. Now that you've confirmed that the problem is not caused by a lack of input voltage, let's work our way systematically through the design, from input through to output, to find out where the problem lies. Let's begin with the fuse. Set the DMM into continuity mode and verify that the fuse is still intact. If the fuse is still intact, verify that the applied AC voltage is being properly rectified. Visually inspect the board and note if two of the diodes in the rectifier bridge are inserted backwards, which may block the input voltage from reaching the input capacitor. If any diodes are reversed, remove the diode and verify that it's still functional using a continuity meter. If it is, replace the diode in the board in the proper orientation and retest the design. Next, check the transformer windings, which could have been incorrectly pinned out. A properly wired transformer will have a primary winding connected between the DC bus and the drain pin of the power integrations device. It will also have at least one secondary winding connected from the anode of the output diode to the output return trace. If either of these traces is disconnected, power will not be transferred between the primary and secondary sides of the power supply and no output voltage will be achieved. To check this, remove the transformer and verify that there is continuity between each set of pins specified by the PI Expert Transformer Electrical Schematic. After each winding has been tested, replace and solder the transformer back into the board. Going back to the input fuse test, if the fuse is blown, check that it's rated to handle both the steady state input and inrush current of your power supply. If the blown fuse is properly rated, you will need to verify what caused the fuse to blow. If you don't verify the cause of failure and you simply replace the fuse with a new one and turn on the power, the fuse will blow again. Before proceeding, first visually inspect the board and check that no debris has caused a short circuit. The most common causes of a blown fuse are an incorrect fuse rating, the PI device is installed backwards, 
typically seen with devices which use PCB heat sinking. A bridge diode is reversed. The common mode choke PCB layout is reversed. The power integrations device is damaged or the transformer pinout is incorrect. First, confirm that all of the diodes in the rectifier bridge are functional by removing them from the board and verifying their continuity with the DMM. Next, check that the power integrations device and input bolt capacitor are properly installed. If either has been reversed, remove the component from the circuit, replace it with a new one, and retest your power supply. If your input capacitor is greater than approximately 33 microfarads, you may need to add a thermistor to your design to limit the inrush current. If you don't, the inrush current may be larger than the surge current rating of the bridge diode, causing it to fail and blow the fuse. If the problem is not due to large inrush current, another possible cause is an incorrect PCB footprint on the common mode choke, causing an input short circuit. A quick way to verify this is to check the continuity between the pins, making sure that there is no short circuit across the AC input pins. You can do this while leaving the choke in the circuit, but first make sure that the AC input is disconnected. If there is a direct path connecting the AC input pins through the common mode choke, you will need to relay out your PCB. Now we will confirm that the power integrations device hasn't been damaged. Visually inspect the power integrations device to see if the package is cracked or if there are any visible signs of damage. If so, see the course Fixing a Flyback Supply which has a damaged power integrations device. If there are no visual signs of failure, replace the device with a new one and retest your design. If this solves the problem, then see the course Fixing a Flyback Supply which has a damaged power integrations device to identify what damaged the IC. An error in the transformer pinout may cause a short circuit between the DC bus and the primary return. Remove the transformer and verify that its pinout matches PI expert documentation using the same technique demonstrated earlier. Thank you for attending the course Fixing a Flyback Supply with No Output Voltage. If you have any additional comments or questions, please email piuniversity at powerant.com.